soft drink, pop, soda, tonic. In North America alone, we have plenty of names for fizzy drinks, but whatever we call them, and whichever ones we like the best, they all are what they are, thanks to one basic principle, carbonation. This is the science that puts the pop in pop, the sparkle in sparkling, that tingle on the end of our tongue. And we've been doing it to beverages for hundreds of years. So why all this fuss over fizz? Let's crack the can on some facts together, right here on Owl Connected's General Knowledge. Carbonation is the process of adding carbon dioxide, or CO2, gas to a liquid. As it turns out, CO2 dissolves exceptionally well in water, which is quite unique for gases. As it dissolves, it creates the compound H2CO3, or carbonic acid. Now, this mild acid is what makes carbonated beverages so exciting to us. As we drink them, it creates a slight burning sensation on the end of our tongue, which we feel as a tingle. It is a really curious and thrilling sensation. But how did we stumble upon this idea in the first place? As it turns out, naturally carbonated water does exist. Some mineral water is carbonated. This is water that comes from a place called a mineral spring, which is where salts, other minerals, and gases are dissolved into groundwater, or water that is found underground. It then emerges at the surface. Now, not all mineral waters are drinkable. In fact, some are downright dangerous. But the ones that are safe created quite a level of excitement hundreds of years ago. By the middle of the 16th century, the demand for them was so high that the world's first bottled waters were created from sources across Europe. Eventually, a chemist named Joseph Priestley figured out how to artificially carbonate water in 1767. This led to the creation of soft drinks, which were started by Johann Jacob Schwepp. His company Schwepp's started to sell soda water in 1783. Now these first drinks were pretty much just bubbly water, but over time, people began to experiment to make the drinks more flavorful. They added things like roots, berries, juices, sugars, and more. The soft drink revolution was on. Which brings us back to a pretty simple question. What really goes on when you pop the cap, flip the tab, or twist the top on some pop? Let's get back to how carbonation takes place. The process begins by CO2 gas being pumped into the water. After the gas is dissolved, the container is sealed at a high pressure. Now, the liquid cannot be poured right to the top. There needs to be what is known as a headspace. This is an area where extra CO2 gas can sit. If you take a look at a clear bottle of soda, you can see this space. When the bottle is sealed, the pressure keeps the liquid and the gas balanced, or at equilibrium. This means you have neither CO2 gas from the liquid trying to escape to the top, nor do you have any of the CO2 gas in the headspace trying to enter the liquid. In other words, there are no bubbles. But the second you open that bottle, the magic happens. The release of pressure sends all of the CO2 in the liquid rushing to join the surface. We first see and hear this as an initial whoosh, and then the drink settles and we receive a steady stream of bubbles rising upward through the liquid. This is the CO2 making its journey out of the water. As long as you have those bubbles, the distinct bite of the carbonic acid will give your drink its magic tingle. But once the bubbles run out, your drink has run out of CO2 and become flat. This is why a flat drink tastes so meh. It no longer has any carbonic acid. Man, did that video ever make me thirsty for some pop? Or soda? Soft drink? Whatever you call it, if you're thirsty for some more knowledge, please subscribe below. That way you'll never miss another episode of Owl Connected's General Knowledge.